Hello friends, today we are going to study about non-shivering thermogenesis. As we already have studied the shivering thermogenesis where animals shiver their body to generate heat. But in this case, shivering is absent, the animals generate their heat by some biochemical mechanism which we are going to discuss today. First of all, we see it occur in eutherians, what we call as placental mammals. It does not occur in all placental mammals, rather it occurs in animals which are newborn, what we call as neonatals. It occurs in torpid mammals which go into torpor state as well as in hibernating mammals. How this brown fat is different from white fat, what we have seen in shivering process. Brown fat, it has got numerous iron-rich mitochondria. Second thing is that it is lipid droplet size is much bigger than the white fat. That's why it appears brownish in color. If you see the differences in white fat and brown fat, we see in white fat there is less mitochondria, whereas in brown fat there is more mitochondria. In white fat we see lipid droplet size is smaller, whereas in brown fat it's much bigger. And white fat it helps in thermogenesis in case of shivering, while as brown fat it helps in thermogenesis as well, but in case of non-shivering process. Now we are going to see how it happens diagrammatically by drawing here the cell, and in it there is mitochondria. This is brown adipose tissue which has got lots of mitochondria in it. The BAT cells have got beta adrenergic receptors which are in turn linked to G protein. The non shivering thermogenesis is controlled by autonomous nervous system. This autonomous nervous system releases norepinephrine molecules near BAT site. These norepinephrine molecules bind to beta adrenergic receptors, activate G protein. This G protein activates adenylene cyclase while it converts ATP to cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP activates protein kinase A. Protein kinase A in turn activates hormone sensitive lipase. This hormone sensitive lipase converts triglycerides to fatty acids. Now these fatty acids can be transported to mitochondria. When these fatty acids get transported to mitochondria, in mitochondria oxidative phosphorylation occurs. In oxidative phosphorylation there is the ETC that is electron transport chain where H positive or we can say protons are transported outside of the matrix of mitochondria. And now these protons are outside the matrix of now they need to get into the matrix to produce ATPs. Either they go through the ATP synthase to produce ATPs or if they choose another way that's through UCP uncoupling protein they can produce heat in it if they go through this UCP rather than ATP synthase. Now we will see what are the two pathways for protons to go into the matrix of mitochondria. We see here in the picture that there is a ATP synthase, there is ETC, there is UCP in the membrane of mitochondria. The upper side is the intermembrane space and beneath there is matrix of mitochondria. First of all, there is oxidation, there are production of protons and these protons are transported to the intermembrane space of mitochondria. And now these protons have two pathways to choose. Either they can go through the ATP synthase or they can go through the thermogenin or UCP. If we see here in ATP synthase, there is a production of ATP from ADP. When this H positive or proton go through the ATP synthase, there is a proton motive force where it's able to produce ATP by this process, what we call as chemoosmosis. And if the same proton goes through UCP, that's uncoupling protein, there is a production of heat. Energy by proton motive force is displayed as heat. That's why we call this uncoupling oxidative phosphorylation. This is also called a proton leak because the protons are leaked into the matrix rather than going through into ATP synthase where this is in need to produce ATPs. Guys, thanks for watching the video. Give it a thumbs up if you like it and do subscribe to this channel.